Hello, ladies. Welcome back to another episode of Money Talks. These are the special edition episodes of Celebrate You. So today we have a very special guest. Uh, and what I love about her is that it's like all of her work, it's about empowering women with the right tools, depend regardless of where they are in the journey. So today we have Indre Vukevicute from uh, founder of Lily Advisory. She is a wealth coach. Hello, Indre, and welcome to the show. Hello, and thank you so much for having me. It is such a pleasure to be thank here. Thank you. Thank you so much. The honor is mine. Okay. So let's get yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> so let's start with the very basics. Can you tell us a little bit about you and how you end up, ended up doing this type of work? Yeah, that's. I'll try and keep it short. But um, I've actually been in the in the financial industry for what 15 years now. I lost count. Um, and I started my career uh, in private wealth management. I worked for one of the top investment banks, Morgan Stanley, and then from there, it kind of just all rolled over. But really, from the very beginning, when I started my career, I always had this this interest in, you know, women in the investment world, women in the finance world. And especially, you know, on our team, we were working with many very wealthy individuals, helping them manage their money. And the one thing that really surprised me is that we were one of the biggest teams in the bank globally, yet we only had one female client. Wow. Wow. I know, right? So that kind of made me think, what is really the reason that there aren't so many women present in the in the investment world? Why, you know, why are women not managing money as much? And of course, there are a number of different um, reasons, but I kind of always had that in the back of my mind. And so in 2013, I had um, an offer come through from a client to go and work with them for a little while, which I kind of took it as a sign that it's time for me to move on and maybe start, you know, something different and then start something on my own. So I worked with them for a couple of years, um, helping them build a family office in London. And during the time, I also kind of went back to that whole question, what is stopping women from investing? And I did a bit more research into that and looking into it, seeing what's out there. And to be honest, I came with my own conclusion that I think the biggest the biggest hindrance to women not really participating in the world of investing and personal finance overall is really that gap, the kind of the lack of knowledge combined with the lack of confidence and the lack of education. And that's what got me to start my my own company, Lily Advisory, in, uh, when was it, 2015, and really to focus on bridging that gap because, you know, I, I come from from the money management industry. So I understand that world very well. And so I kind of saw this, the, this, this gap that we really need to go back to basics and we really need to make finance simple again because it's not as complicated as the industry portrays it. And I think over the years, it has become this, this kind of thing that, oh, okay, investing is only for millionaires and pretty much only for, you know, gray haired guys in gray suits with a briefcase. It's like if you're a woman, you can't basically really participate in that world unless you become like super tough and you man up and you get all the jargon. But that's, no, not, that's not how, how we it are. is. Yeah. No, and that's not what the, what the investing world is about. And, you know, you being uh, in a fintech industry as well, you see that with all of the um, advancement in technology, the opportunities are absolutely immense yes. you know anybody can do it at any point in time like there is no need to have millions you can bloody build up millions by starting you know early that's the whole point so yeah so that's my journey and that's what really got me into that and 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 I really wanted to take a different approach because I couldn't find many people combining all the elements together so you know really thinking about 
the educational and the knowledge and the confidence, as well as the practical steps. So really learning and going back to the basics and understanding, well, what on earth is an equity? How is that different from a bond? What is a fund? How do I invest into a fund? What platform can I use? How do I navigate that? And, you know, adding on top of that also the mindset work, because it's just so important, I think, to tackle all of these different, uh, different elements. So yeah, that is how I ended up being where I am today. Awesome. That is fascinating. And all those questions are like, yeah, I'm like, what's the answer? <laughs> because it's, it's so easy to get caught up in the jargon of the industry that if we don't understand it, just by not understanding, then we just like close our eyes and our ears and we just forget about it. So I love that what you do is kind of like education based. So, Because to be honest, the industry isn't helping us at the moment as much either, right? Because what they're portraying as well, it sort of comes across very complicated and and, and I think quite often... Uh, and, I, and not just women, but quite often women are in a way dismissed in the sense that, you know, we get this like, oh, don't you worry about all of this. I'll take care of it, you know, when it comes to kind of wealth management and financial advisory. But I think every woman, no matter what her background is, can very easily with the right tools and the right knowledge be very much on top of their personal finance and make decisions themselves. And that's what this is about. Exactly. About like helping every single woman to be on top of their personal finances. Like, actually, that's such a good point. Like one of the things that inspired me to do this series of episodes just about money, it was kind of like thinking about, I saw something on LinkedIn, like few posts the same week that it was about like poverty Oh, then it was about poverty and then financial empowerment. And then that same week, I was going to, well, I have a friend that supports one of the charities here in Malaysia and they work with refugees. So I'm going to support one of the families and they sent me the profile of the family. And basically the profile is they are a refugee family and then he works, but, and she, she stays home with the three kids, but... Uh, like they are struggling now because he had an accident. So he broke both his legs and he's an alcoholic. So um, she basically, she's under a lot of pressure because of the money, kind of like she has to stay at home and he abuses her and the and the kids. And I was like, I was like so destroyed. I was like, oh my God, how is this happening? Just like, how is this happening? And basically, I kind of put together the dots and I was like, exactly what I saw in LinkedIn this week that kind of prompted me to think. I was like, if she had the right education, the right tools and the right money, would she stay in that situation? No. The answer was like, of course, yeah. no, there is no way. And the same thing applies not just for a refugee. It applies for the immigrant in another country doing a difficult job. But it applies for the 40, well, age doesn't matter. It, it applies for the woman who's married, dedicated her life to a marriage. And the marriage is not going well. He's cheating. She's destroyed. But she's very concerned about money. Would she stay if she had the money? No. Absolutely. Yeah, That that's the thing. I think sometimes... It's, it's, it's about having that independence, that financial independence, no matter what your situation is at the moment, because exactly like you say, you never know what might happen. Even if you are in a super, you know, happy relationship, happy marriage, everything is going great. I don't know, your bus, your, your husband walks onto the street and a bus hits him. He's gone. What do you do, yes. right? If you've never really dealt with money, you you kind of you need to be on top of that to prepare for whatever might come your way. Uh, irrespective, you know, even if you're not in a relationship and you're single, you want to prepare for the for your future, for for the life ahead, because you don't want to, uh, you know, at the end of the day, come to a point where you can't afford to continue your lifestyle or you can't, you know, have the things that you want to have, and you know. Being on top of your finances, being on top of money and growing your wealth is incredibly important to uh, 
reduce a lot of the stress in your life and to have that, you know, independence and that and that freedom. And to be honest, I always think being wealthy is a good thing. Think how much more you can do when you are, yeah. right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And even like we don't even go to we don't even have to go to the being wealthy. Like if we start with like being financially safe that I know exactly if yeah. my husband like dies all of a sudden, then I feel safe that I've got a plan. <laughs> That's it. It's like I've got it sorted. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's about having that plan so that you don't have to stress. Yes. So if I'm a woman listening to this or I've been thinking about this for years, where do I start? Yeah, that's the most common question. It's like, where do I start if I don't mm. know where to start? So I, I mean, I always start and I always suggest to start by kind of, first of all, you know, thinking about your mindset a little bit and doing some work on that and seeing what are perhaps some patterns and discovering what your beliefs are about money and wealth. And then the second, the second point is really to, you know, before you jump into any investing, before you jump into managing any money, what you want to do is you really want to get clear about your goals. Mm. For me, that's the most important step is to, you know, we every year we kind of, we have our fitness goals, we have our work goals, what we want to achieve in our career, in our business, but we have to always remember our financial goals as well, because that pretty much determines the rest of the path that you're going to take. It will make it so much easier for you to even figure out the whole world of investing and make choices and decide what and how you need to choose. So really, I always look at goals in three different categories. So first and foremost, you want to think about what do I want to achieve in the next 12 months and really go, you know, I always say take a blank piece of paper and start writing it down. Write down everything that comes into your head and give it a value, you know, uh, quantify it. Whether you want to go on a luxury holiday, buy a handbag or donate to charity or whatever it might be, every goal is an important goal. Then you want to look at the next three to five years. So thinking a little bit longer term, you know, perhaps you want to buy a house. Maybe you want to start a business. Maybe you want to take a year of sabbatical, whatever that might be. And then eventually looking at the really long term, you know, five plus years. So thinking as far as, you know, retirement, how you see that, what you what you want to have achieved by then. Is it maybe, you know, a, another property um, as a holiday property? Maybe you want to, um, maybe you have kids and you want to plan for, for their education. Maybe you want to be able to give your kids a start in the, on the property ladder, whatever that is. So really, you basically want to take three pieces of paper and write, start thinking and write all of your goals down and then kind of go back to that and pick three to five most important ones. And it's okay if you only have one goal, you know, in the long term mm -hmm. future. That's fine. It's not about quantity. It's about what you really want. Uh, and once you have those goals set, then it's obviously, you know, looking at how they fit in to your sort of financial plan, then it's it's really doing uh, a little bit more work around gaining that knowledge and understanding the world of finance, understanding simple things, different asset classes. How do they work? You know, how do they correlate one to the other? What are the options you have in terms of investing? What type of platforms you could use, etc.? So once you tackle the goals, once you tackle the knowledge, mm -hmm. then you can combine the two in a practical way. Because let me give you an example. Let's say if, if in three to five years, one of your goals is to go on a year of a holiday, you know, take a sabbatical for a year. What that means is that right now with the money that you have, you need to focus on maintaining that money and growing, yeah. which means certain type of investments would be appropriate. And there's only some 
type of uh, investments that you will want to look at. Now, when the time comes when you want to take that sabbatical, suddenly it all changes because now what you need from that money is an income for a year. Therefore, again, the type of investments that you will want to go in will be completely different from the ones that you did all those years back because these investments will need to generate you an income. So what that helps you do is it really helps you be very focused and not get distracted because you will always have people, your friends, your colleagues telling you about all of these amazing investment ideas and telling you, oh, you know what? The best idea for this year to invest is A and Z. There is no best idea that is available for everyone, right? Because it depends where you're at in life. What are you trying to do? And so with having a very clear goal, you will be able to really kind of sift through those and and have an easier way of choosing what you need to choose because you will not be distracted because you will look at it and you'll be able to say straight away, no, thank you, this is not for me. Or, okay, this sounds interesting. This could work with my current plan. So it just will make your life easy. And I always say you have to come back to your goals, you know, every six months, every 12 months, because life changes, things change, your goals change. And it's an exercise that you have to do on an ongoing basis. But it's, in my opinion, it's an absolute cornerstone and an absolute key before you start off on that journey. Yes, I totally agree. I have follow up questions on what you just said. Um, the bit about goals, it's very clear. Just go and write them. You don't need to have like any fancy anything. You just need a notebook, paper, computer, or phone. You can write them out. Uh, knowledge. Same. It's the same question. It's like, where do I start? There is so much out there in the internet. Where do I start? Yeah, that's a, that's the biggest problem. It's, it's almost like an overload of information, right? It's like, how do you really figure it out? You know, do I go and read the FT straight away? Or, you know, what do I do? Where, where do I read? And depending on where you are in the world, there are, you know, a couple of people that run blogs, that run different websites that kind of give you a good understanding of, um, of the basics. One that I would suggest to... Uh, have a look at is investopedia.com. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit US centric, but it does give you some, some kind of good, um, good answers. And then it has tutorials and it has different courses that you can take as well. I mean, other suggestion, Hey, get in touch with me. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's what I do for a living. Right. But really you kind of basically what you want to focus on is, is really the basics. It's kind of understanding. Okay. Let me understand, I would say probably five things would be uh, understanding different asset classes. What are they? You know, how do they correlate to each other? What, what does that really mean? So you want to look at equities, you want to look at fixed income, and you want to look at alternative investments. Mm -hmm. So kind of the three big groups and just have a broad understanding Second is really understanding the different vehicles that you can use. So what's the difference in buying a single share versus buying a fund and how, you know, understanding how do funds work? What is a mutual fund? How does that work? Understanding the difference between an active fund versus a passive fund. You know, what are the key differences? And the last two would be really understanding the concept of diversification and why it's important not to put all of your money into just one investment. Even if you think it's going to blow out uh, the stars, you still need to make sure that you have a number of different investments. And finally, it's understanding the concept of risk. Yes. What does risk actually mean? Because I think sometimes it's we confuse risk with kind of how we react emotionally. So what I always say, what you can risk is an amount that doesn't, if you lose it, it's not going to impact your life in a material way. 
You don't judge risk by how upset you will be to lose that amount. Because let's face it, even if you invest a hundred dollars or pounds or euros and you lose that, you you're going to be upset. Be upset. Yes. <laughs> exactly. But is that going to change your life in a material way? No. That means you can afford to lose that amount. So think like this is how to think about risk in a very, very simple yeah. way. How much can I afford to lose until it starts impacting my life in a material way? That's a very So these, I would say, are you know, the key things that you want to get a bit of a grip. And, and then obviously understanding, depending on where you are in the world, what type of uh, platforms you can use to make your investments and what type of um, tax efficient vehicles are available to you. So for example, I am based in the UK and there's a lot that you can do within certain uh, tax efficient wrappers. So yeah, let me recap. So it's understanding the asset classes, understanding basically vehicles in terms of funds, active versus passive, understanding why you need to diversify, understanding the concept of risk, and then understanding the practical side of different platforms and tax efficiency. Awesome. I think it's very, I like it how you just like one, two, three, four, five, simple and if we stick to Googling, if we want, we don't want, we don't have to go and spend money to understand this. There's like so much out there that we can just like Google it and then have the basic, the basics covered. And then we put exactly. it all together. It's like putting the pieces of the puzzle together and we're like, oh, I have my goals. Oh, now I understand. Then I can start talk thinking about how I put those two together and create my practical plan. Yeah, absolutely. So talking about the practical element, the example that you used is a beautiful one, but it's like sometimes we're saving for something. The example that you used was like, hey, what if I want a sabbatical? And then in the case of the sabbatical or let's say financial freedom, like we're saving, 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 and then we want to turn that pot of money into invested in an instrument that then would give us a return such that we can have monthly income and then live from that. Uh, I think many of us lack the knowledge, ex ex exactly, it's like knowledge, understanding of how to do it because probably there is like this common thinking that it's like, oh, if I put my money in the bank right now, interest rates are like, non-existent but then if i invest my money a common fear is that i will lose my money therefore i'm saving for this uh whatever thing that i'm saving for but i'm not growing my money i'm just like putting it all together how do i know how to invest it wisely Yeah, so this is a, this is a very good point, and it's a very common. Um, I guess it's a, some, to some extent lack of confidence, but it's a very common reason that I hear as well why a lot of us don't do anything. It's like, well, I'm scared. What if I lose it all? You know, what's going to happen then? But this is where this is where you need to think about the, those two concepts that I already mentioned, which is diversification. So making sure that you don't invest all of your money into just one thing and you diversify it across in many different ways. So in terms of the type of investments, in terms of different asset classes, in terms of geographies, in terms of time frame of that investment, in any kind of possible way that you can diversify, that's what you want to mm -hmm. do. And then it's really understanding that risk because that's where... That's where it comes to, right? Depending on how much of that money you can. And, th and this is the hard part, right? Because you don't want to lose any of it. But unfortunately, if you want to make money, you have to take risks. Yes. There is nothing that is risk-free. Even your money sitting in the bank has some sort of risk to some extent. And to be honest, your money sitting in the bank while earning nothing, you're already losing money because of inflation. The prices are going up. There is inflation, which means that if you do nothing with your money, the, the thousand 
dollars, pounds, euros that you have today will not be worth a thousand in a year's time. So this is kind of also understanding that just having your cash in cash is not necessarily the best option because money devalues. And it's really thinking about risk in a very rational way. You know, how much do you want to grow your money and how much risk can you take? You know, if if you say like, okay, I want to turn a thousand pounds into a million while well, you're not being very realistic, are you? If you're saying, I want to, you know, turn that thousand pounds into maybe 1,500. Okay, that's a reasonable, you know, idea. Then you just need to think about it. Let's say if I invest a thousand pounds today and things go wrong and I lose half of it, is that going to impact me or not? In reality, depending on where you are in life, if you're employed or running a business, you're you're getting a salary, you're continuously contributing to your savings plan, a thousand pounds to be lost shouldn't be a material impact on you, which means you can afford to take that risk because this is, unfortunately, this is the true. If you want to have a return, if you want to grow, you have to take the risk. And that's why you have to diversify because some of the risk that you take will be the wrong kind of risk and you will lose. But then the other risk that you will take will be the right kind of risk and you will gain potentially even more than what you've lost. And, you know, it's it doesn't matter how much knowledge you acquire or how many years you spend learning, you're still going to make mistakes and you're still going to lose. I've been, you know, in the industry and I've been investing money for 15 years. Do I still m- make mistakes? Yes. Absolutely. Do I still make investments that lose me money? Yes. Absolutely. But then I also make those that make me money. So what you want to look is that kind of the overall But, you know, unfortunately, without doing it, it's just not going to happen. And also, another point that I could say is, you know, the best, the best school and the best way to learn is by doing it and taking action. And if you're really feeling unsure, and if you're feeling a little bit scared about it, start with small amounts, start with 50, with 100, right? Start there and see that way you will be able to kind of observe how all of this works. You will be able to understand yourself and how you react when things are going up, when things are going down. And it will be a good practice for you until you put serious money on the table. Yeah. Uh, and you will learn so much by just taking action and doing yes. it. Now that, that, that's such a good point. And now that you say serious money on the table... Like many people have the perception that having a wealth manager, well, we have the the idea of investment bankers, right? That it's uh, investment banking, it's for very wealthy people. So, but things have changed with a mix of fintechs and uh, people like you. So if we say who can, Let's say, what type of woman can go to you and say, hey, I've got some money. What does some money look like? Is it 1,000 pounds, 500 pounds, 10,000 pounds? How? Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, I wouldn't say there is no cap. It's about what you want to do. So to give you an idea, you know, I've worked with women that have maybe, you know, around five to 10,000 pounds and... And they're at the start of their journey, but they want to take action. They want to start and they're ready to basically grow their savings portfolio, meaning that they're earning enough to contribute on a regular basis and they don't want to wait anymore to put all of that in action. So, you know, they come to me. I also had those that have quite significantly more, you know, I'm working with one woman right now that's looking to come into around 200,000 this summer and she wants to you know prepare for that and know what she's doing I've also worked with someone who had uh, 60 million portfolio so it's it's really (laughs) it's really very (laughs) yeah that's a different level altogether but it's really varied and I always say as long as you're ready to invest in yourself and to increase your knowledge and to really kind of commit to it because it will require commitment and work on your side. But if you're ready to do it, if you're ready to take action, it doesn't matter how much you have to start with. As long as you're ready to take that action and start, 
that's all that matters to me, to be completely Amazing. honest. Good. And then, like, of course, now with the rise of fintechs and technologies, we have robo-advisors. And then robo-advisors say, oh, our technology is so much better than going with uh, than going with a person as an advisor because we have this algorithm that it basically adjusts the the portfolio allocation based on all of this data and minimizes the risks while optimizing the returns. Uh, in other words, that's the pitch basically. Mm -hmm. If I am like, oh, should I go now that I know that I can invest? let's say going with someone like you with a small amount, I don't need to be a millionaire. I don't have to have like hundreds of thousands. I can start with what I have and I can go with someone like you or I can go with any of the automated platforms in the market. How do I make a decision? What are the things that I need to think through to say it is best? I think it's best for me to go with this automated platform versus I think it's best for me to go uh, with a human So this is the thing. I mean, there are pros and cons to using automated platforms. And it's, I think, because they are still quite new, uh, we still don't know exactly how well they would do when a real crisis hit. Let's say if another 2008 comes, how will they fare against um, active managers? But there's always been you know, two schools, one that go for active managers versus passive. And to be honest, I'm in neither And I always think that you kind of have to diversify again and probably do a bit of both. But what I suggest to people, so I personally don't do any investments on your behalf. I'm there just to teach you, you know, the, the ropes of the business. So my job is not to kind of tell you invest in this and this and that. My job is to give you the knowledge and the confidence so you can make a decision. Now is at the end of the day, it's up to you whether you want to do it all yourself or whether you want to do a combination of a, um, a human manager or a robo-advisory. And in all honesty, the way I kind of uh, look at it is basically saying to people, you, you want to think how much time you want to spend on this, how much dedication you want to put into it, and how excited you are about this. Mm. You know, if if you are like, oh, my God, this is something that I really, really want to do and I really want to, you know, be on top of it. Fantastic. Do it all yourself. If you're still having, you know, a rather busy life and you're doing other things and working on other projects and this is just one of your other projects, you probably want to do a combination. Yeah. So in that case, I always suggest for people to follow their kind of passion so the the DIY style the doing it yourself you want to focus on things that excite you on things that you're passionate about because that way you will keep your interest and you will be looking at it seriously you know if if you're interested in I don't know let's say alternative energy um artificial intelligence, electric vehicles, whatever, you're going to be excited to invest in things that relate to that. But if you then have to go and, and invest into, you know, boring, big blue chip companies, are you going to be excited about doing that? Not so much. So you're probably going to lose interest and you're going to stop doing it. So why don't you leave the boring bid for either the robo advisors or the financial advisors? And I always say, You know, to, to some extent, robo-advisory probably works for when you have amounts up to, you know, $100,000, $250,000 because they are efficient in terms of cost and they are efficient in terms of what they do. When you go start going above $200,000 k you probably want some yeah. advisory element in there because you want to look at other types of investments as well because robo advisory only covers certain um type of investments yeah. as well but this is this is what i say you know split it up so that the kind of the the boring nest egg type of part of your wealth is is managed in that way and you focus on what you're passionate about and to be honest even 
the 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 wealthy clients that I used to work with in the, in the investment uh, bank or the client that I had with sixty million. That's exactly the approach they do. You know, the the big part of the money that is kind of for very long term future is invested in pretty vanilla, simple things with a manager. And then they focus on things that they're passionate about, that drive them, that they're going to get excited about, you know. And I think it's a good good way to look yeah, at that. That's such a very good point because I, I hadn't even thought about it that way. Like you're bringing passion and excitement to investments. Like in our heads, investments are kind of like boring and laborious. <laughs> and now it's like, oh, no. I can bring passion and excitement. And then all of a sudden, if I have the knowledge and it's something that I like, then it's not a chore anymore. It's something I want to do. No, exactly. Look, I'm extremely passionate about the whole sort of, you know, bringing excitement in into this world. And, and to be honest, again, with the development of the technology, with how many different ways you have to invest, whatever is your passion, I'm pretty certain you can find a way to invest in it. And, and you know, I think quite often we have this, this view that investing is sort of like, oh, but I'm, you know, supporting all these bad companies and I'm doing all these bad things. I mean, impact investing is something that's um, been on my radar for a long period of time. And I always, you know, like to teach women about the fact that you can invest into things that matter to you, whatever it is, whether it's women empowerment. There are ways you can put your money to work to support those causes. And that's where the passion comes in, right? right? That's how how you then, that, that's how you keep up with it. That's how you get excited about making more money because you can see what that money is doing. You can see that you're making an impact. You're basically investing money, growing your wealth, and changing the world for the yeah. better. So... It's a no-brainer. I absolutely love that approach, especially because like, well, including myself, but like many of the ladies that may be listening to us, we are like professional women. So we do have an income, right? So we are either building our savings or the six months buffer, but we are like moving in, in the ladder. Uh, so we are building this buffer. And forget about the knowledge. We all know that we're smart. So we'll just need to go and Google and like do it. But probably it's like one of the biggest blockers. It's the, I'm not connected to it because like I'm more connected to many of these ladies. They have their job and then they have a passion and they have a passion project. And many of them may be like cooking or doing vegan, you know, or sustainable fashion, women's empowerment, like like so green like there's so many things that we are passionate about and we haven't linked the two together that not only we can put invest in our passion project with our time and energy and resources and passion as a project but also we can invest our money in the same cause and the money will grow with us no, absolutely. And if I can give one more tip, yeah. you know, use the almighty Google. But And what you want to, especially for these kind of passions, I mean, you're passionate about veganism. I'm telling you, you can invest in veganism, okay? Whatever, Whatever it is, it is. <laughs> there is a way to do it. And one way of doing that is if you look up something called an ETF, yeah. which is an exchange-traded fund, which is effectively a passive fund that just replicates whatever it is. And there was, I think, a couple of years ago, a vegan ETF launched, which means that it invests in a number of different companies that promote that. You know, if you're thinking about global water supply, you can invest, you know, in that aging population. I mean, whatever it is that you're interested in. So, for example, I'm a huge believer in, in technology and, you know, AI and uh, and all of that. So I do invest in those things through ETFs. And, and it's interesting because, you know, I want to I wanna read more. I want to understand yeah. more. I want to look at it. Uh, you know, I want to do all of these kind of you, you naturally grow your knowledge because it's your passion. Yes. You know, do I also invest in the kind of in the boring stuff and the boring company? Yes. How do I do that? Exactly like you said, through kind of either active funds or through robo-advisory. But th this is, I think, this is for 
for you, whoever is listening, to find what your balance is and how you want to, you know, to kickstart. But the, you can totally put your money to where your passion is. And the two are, you know, not contradictory. These days, investing money is not a bad thing because when you invest it towards things that matter to you and that matter to to the world you're doing a good thing you're earning you know money so you're growing your wealth which means that by doing that you can help more and more and you're already helping in the process and i had an interesting conversation with uh with a woman we were talking about peer to peer lending just as an option for her to invest, which is effectively lending your money to small businesses and other individuals through different peer-to-peer lending platforms. And she sort of said, well, I choose this platform that basically uh, I don't get anything out of it. I don't get an interest because I feel like it's unethical for me to invest in a platform and get an interest from these people who really need the money. So my point of view to her was, well, First of all, uh, they're still paying an interest. So somebody is taking that interest and it's probably the company that you're investing through who are making a profit, et cetera, et cetera. Second of all, you know, it is ethical to charge an interest because by getting the person who's borrowing money to commit, you're giving them the drive that they need to make change and to go further. And I was saying to her, you know, if you put that 100 pounds into peer-to-peer and you never earn interest, you will always only have that 100 pounds that you can lend and help with. But if you put it into a platform where you also earn an interest, over time, that 100 pounds can grow to 150, 200, 300. And think about how many more people you can help if you suddenly have 300 versus 100. So it's sort of just kind of getting out of that belief that, making money and earning money is wrong because it isn't because the more you have the more you can do with it and the more you can help love it because then it's like it's so funny how we start with like oh investments the strategy i don't know to then saying like oh cool i can invest in my passions and it can give me money and then the little boy says like oh but da 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 money is I don't know, like it's not good to get interest from all these people, but actually we reframe that thought. Just like you said, it's like the mindset around money and investment is as important as having the knowledge and my goals and the strategy. It all comes together so that then we can have a, a good action plan to be on top of exactly, money. Exactly. Oh, this was absolutely, absolutely beautiful, like, beautiful conversation. Uh, I've learned like so much. I hadn't even like thought about the the idea of, yeah, I can invest in my passions, which is obvious because like it kind of is, <laughs> but sometimes we yeah. just need another perspective to say, but duh, yeah, you can invest in your passions and then you're excited about it and we can bring excitement to investments. Exactly. Hey, that's my mission yeah. to get women excited about it, you know? You, you can, you can be excited. And I don't know, whatever it is that you like, you will find a way to invest in it and, and that will create excitement. And, you know, and that's when instead of meeting in a pub for a pint, we're going to meet in a nice bar for champagne and discuss what our passions are bringing us. <laughs> and and I, I totally, I, I totally loved it. Yeah. Because then it's the bringing excitement, like, all these professional women, they are like smart women. We just don't invest exactly. because it's boring, probably. Because we're capable. We're very capable, like PhD. Experience, like, Absolutely. Like properly running the show in the business, in the office, in the family. Like super like top women. But our money, it's kind of like, oh, I'll procrastinate. I'll do it later. Oh, I'll put it in the robot advisor, but without having a proper exciting strategy. Our strategy is like, oh yeah, I'll put it in the robot advisor rather than just like we have a passion project. It's like, uh, oh, that passion and excitement bring it to my investments and my money life too. Yeah. Oh, that's super amazing. Um, so if, if we want to get in touch with you and learn more and like properly work with you, 
where can we find you? You can find me online, www.liliadvisory.com. You can find me on Instagram. I think if you just enter my name or my handle is Indre Butk. <laughs> <laughs> so I-N-D-R-E-B-U-T-K. If you just type in my name on LinkedIn, uh, I'm also there. Uh, otherwise, uh, my email is also open, Indre at liliadvisory.com. Whichever platform you prefer. I'm there. Amazing. And I'm conscious your last name is uh, difficult to pronounce to myself, for myself. So what <laughs> is... Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. So it's Butkevichute, which is a very tricky one. But um, yeah, if you just Google Instagram, Indre B-U-T-K, oh, I'll amazing. pop up and then you'll find me from everywhere amazing. else. <laughs> and I will also add all of your social handles in the post as such. In the, in, in the social media Fantastic. post and, and in the Spotify description and such, so that it's like easy to find you. Yeah, it should yeah. be all right. Should Amazing. Be. Well, it's been lovely having you. Uh, are there any final remarks that you would like to say? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It was just so much fun. And I think my final remark is get on it and do it. Stop overthinking it because it will all come together with time. You know, one key takeaway, find a platform that's available for you in whatever country you are. Figure out what's your passion and find one investment relating to that passion and put, I don't know, 50, 100 dollars, euros, pounds in it. Can I start with as low as 50? Yeah. Oh, there's no excuses can. then. Anyone listening can start. Exactly. With exactly. No there, there is no excuse. No. That's that's the point. If I go out for Just dinner do it. and a glass of wine in London, you can easily spend 50. Exactly, if not more. Exactly. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, it's been a pleasure having you. And then, uh, ladies, let's keep in touch. Put everything, well, not everything, on the contrary. Choose one or two things that you loved about the podcast and go and take action. And if you have questions, comments, doubts, concerns, uh, gremlins talking to you, reach out either to Indri or myself, and then we can help you out. Fantastic. And if you do take action, post it on Instagram or LinkedIn and tag us so we can celebrate. Exactly. Oh, amazing. Yes, we can. That's very good point. We can celebrate each other. Amazing. Everyone have an amazing week and speak with you soon. Bye. Bye.